Hey everyone, it's Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus and I wanna share with you how you can add a little bit of interest to your scrapbook layouts or cards and create projects with this. So I'm going to be sharing how you can do some layered titles or embellishments for your projects. This is gonna be really super simple, I think, once you see the process that I am sharing and I'm going to use some pre-made designs so it is very easy to put together. So here on the screen is what I'm gonna share with you how to create. These are all separate images. I started with simply by typing in some text. So I'm going to come over to the text style tool on the left-hand side. I'm going to click on my design mat to get my text cursor. And then I'm simply going to type summer in all capitals. I'm going to click off of it to deselect, click back on it one time, and I'm going to come up here. We're just going to fill this with black color for right now so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side for the text style panel. And I am going to choose a font style that I've already been playing around with. So I'm going to highlight my text here. It, when you first open your text style panel, you wanna give it a few seconds to open and load all of your fonts. I've been working with this, so it should come in just fine. Now the size that you work with is going to be dependent on what you are creating and what you are working with. So every text style is going to be different and going to have different character spacing, different letters, that sort of thing. So every little design that you work with could be a little bit different, but the best part is with the Silhouette Studio software and cutting machines, you are in control and you can change that as you go along. I'm going to make a copy of this and pull the original text off to the left-hand side, just in case I need to go back to it. Then I'm gonna click back on my text and in order to get this a little bit more accurate, I am going to right click and choose convert to path. This is taking it out of editable text mode and you'll notice that the selection box around the text is a lot more accurate. It is no longer editable text. As you can see over here, my textile panel is grayed out. It is no longer editable. That is why I made a copy to pull it off to the left-hand side. So now I have started with the base for my summer design. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna use a couple pre-made designs. I will link those in the description below so you know exactly what I'm using, including this font, Charming Alphabet, in case you want to play along with me. I'm going to click on the library tab in the top right. And then I'm going to search for that design that I was using. So right here, is the design it's 439110 i will have the files i'm using and the font style linked in the description below if you want to follow along with me so for this file i am actually going to let's um, double click and see what happens it's going to pull it onto my current design map but that's up there and all those pieces are individual so i'm actually going to hit Control z and undo it's going to take that out i'm going to come back to my library and right click on it and choose open hibiscus flowers now that puts it on, put it on its own design mat. That's no problem, it makes it easier for us to work with. I'm going to left click, drag across everything, and then either Control G or right click and choose group. Now it's all grouped together, so I'm simply going to Control C to copy it, and I'm going to bring it in and Control V onto my design mat. And I can kind of place this where I would like it. Then I'm going to right click and choose send to back. And then we can adjust this design as we work with it. Next, I'm gonna grab this drink file library. And that one, I believe I found under summer. So I'm gonna come up here and here is the summer drink. I'm again going to right click and choose open because I know how this file opens and I wanna show you how to work with it. So I'm gonna open and now this file comes in in pieces. Originally, this file was designed as a paper piecing file. So we would fill each of these color with color to see it on the screen, and then we would cut from individual pieces. I wanna see what this is going to look like on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little trick I do. I'm gonna come into the library, and I'm going to click on this little icon right here, and I'm going to simply use my snipping tool, or you can do a screenshot, and I'm going to grab an image of that file. Then I can close this, and then I'm going to come back to my file, right click and choose paste. And that's going to bring it in. Now I get a little message, it's low resolution. That's okay, I'm just looking for the colors. 
So in this case, with this glass, I can actually bring this down here, position it onto the base, left click, drag across it, and in this case, I can weld. Those two pieces can be welded together. I'm gonna come over here to the fill color panel, and here's another neat little trick. With this eyedropper, I can click on that. With my design selected on the screen, I'm gonna click on this pink color, and it's going to change it to pink of the design. So if you do like what the design looks like on the screen, you can make it look like that on your screen too. Now this one is the center piece. I'm gonna click once again on the eyedropper, click on the pink, and then when I go to move it around, you're gonna see that it is behind my glass. I'm simply going to right click, choose bring to front, and I can position that where I would like it. Then the umbrella, I'm gonna position you can see it's behind. First, I'm gonna select it, eyedropper tool, click on the blue, and then since it's behind, you could leave it behind. You could put it, I'm gonna right click and choose bring to front. I'm gonna make this the exact same as the photo. And then these two pieces, I moved that one. I'm going to click on one, hold my shift key down, click on the other one, right click, choose group so they don't move. And then I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool and grab that blue. And then they're behind, right click, ring to front. And in just a few quick steps, we now have our completed design. Select everything, right click, choose group. And if you wanna see it without the cut lines, we can go ahead up here to the line color and we can choose the cross hatched. And that shows us what it is going to look like when we cut it out of paper and layer it together. So I'm going to right click, choose copy, come back to my layer title and then right click, choose paste or control C, control V. And then I can size this according to what I would like. Whether you have it in the front or behind, if you want it behind, right click, choose send to back. Either way, I kind of like it in the front. So I'm going to control Z. Now here you can see on the top, I've created an offset or I've created layers to give it a little bit of dimension and make it pop on my scrapbook page. But it is currently hanging off the edge. So I can come in here, left click around everything and drag that down a little bit to decrease the size. And every design you work with is going to be a little bit different. And each time, it, like I'm recre recreating this, it's not gonna be exactly the same unless I am doing the exact same thing and moving everything the exact same place. And sometimes the second time you do it is even better than the first. Next, I'm gonna come in here with everything selected, left click and drag across it, and I'm going to choose the offset panel on the right hand side. And I'm going to click on offset. And this is going to depend on the design and your personal preference. So you can see in some areas, there is a little bit of space here in this case, I kind of, I think I want to make it a little bit different than the first one. So I'm actually going to click apply and then let's fill that with color. So come up here to quick access toolbar and let's fill that with white. And then now when I zoom in here, I can see it a little bit more. I kind of like the space here, but I don't necessarily need this space or this space. So what I'm going to do as I am going to, with the offset selected, right click, choose release compound path. And now since I filled it with white, all those little pieces are gonna be filled with white, but we should be able to work with this. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to click on the outer edge, and then I'm going to click on the inner edge, this, this here, of each piece I want to keep. So let's keep that. Let's get rid of this one. Let's get rid of this one and these little tiny bits here. And there's one over on this side. So those are the only things selected. I can hit delete on my keyboard and it's gone. Now, since it's filled with color and I kept some of those bits, the easiest way to do this is I'm going to left click and drag across everything hold my shift key down, I'm going to click on the glass, click on summertime, and click on the hibiscus. Those are now deselected, 
and I'm going to right click on the white and choose make compound path. Now I have those inner bits that I wanted to keep and the ones I did not are gone. So next I'm gonna create one more offset. And in this case, you can choose to keep those or not. I'm going to click apply, right click on it, release compound path. Then I'm going to hold my shift key down, select the outer edge of that offset. And then all of those little inner bits, I'm gonna press delete and they are gone. And I can select the outer edge of that offset and fill it with color. And then let's zoom out here. I liked this blue a little bit better for my design. And of course, it's going to depend on the photos that you have in your design as well. So I'm going to come in here, select my summer, and then choose the font style that I like. To get a little bit better look of how it's going to look, I'm going to select everything, come in here, choose transparent, and that takes that red color out. Now, it does look a little bit odd in here, but I can fix that or I can leave it as is. Either way, it's a layered title. Let me just show you real quick how I would fix it. I am going to make a copy of Summer, and then I'm going to right click, choose Ungroup, and the only thing I need in this case is the R. I'm going to right click and choose Release Compound Path. And then all I need is that little center piece. I can delete everything else. And if I wanna come in here, this is using the same exact shape that that center of the R is. So if I move this up here, it would cover that. What I actually want is I'm going to turn the cut line back on for this so we can see it and take the color out. I'm going to do a small internal offset. And then I'm going to fill that with a little bit of orange and I can move that up here and add it where I want since I decided after the fact that I really did want it in there. Now I'm going to close this and then with that selected and I'm going to hold my shift key down and select this white layer. And then I'm gonna come over here to my modify panel and I'm going to choose subtract. And now that little shape has been subtracted out of my white layer. I can move that down, it's been subtracted, that orange is going to show through. So either way, you can fix it while you're designing or you could fix it after the fact with just a little bit of manipulation. So I hope those tips have helped in being able to create layered titles and embellishments with the software. There is a world of endless possibilities and designs that you could create. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications on the Silhouette Secrets YouTube channel. And have a great day. Thank you for joining me.